was craving some ice cream but going out to get an ice cream at this time is a little bit shady if you know what i mean so what to gotta do make it myself like a noob nah too much work my philosophy is why do it myself when i can make a machine that does it for me how hard can it be so I'm gonna make this robot and I needed to do a couple things. One, I needed to transport the cup of ice cream. Two, I needed to dispense the toppings. And three, deliver it right to my hand. And as a bonus, it's gotta look cool while doing all of that. You see, this is an aluminum extrusion and these things are kind of awesome because you use them in all sorts of places. They can work as a structural component and they can also double as a linear rail like they do on my 3D printer. My thinking is that I can have a cup holder that moves along the rail and have the goodies airdropped into the cup along the way. And we're done, right? Right? Well, it's not quite that simple. What I didn't realize was how much of an absolute in the behind making the carriage would be first of all I had to make sure that everything moves smoothly and didn't wobble on top of that I had to make sure that everything fit as tightly as a ship in the Suez Canal too soon well you're lucky you only get to see it once but that's because I totally got the assembly right the first time totally Looks like the carriage is ready for pickup. So let's see if we can get this off. This is where the cup sits. Since we have a carriage, we need to be able to make it move. And we do that with a motor. My first thought was to use a stepper motor but I apparently hate myself and opted to use a servo motor, AKA a motor with an encoder. But what the heck is a stepper motor, you might ask. Thank you for asking. Let me give you the quick version. Got all that? Hold on, give me <sighs> Sorry about that. To be honest, I can't be bothered to repeat all of that. So I'll give you the cliff notes version. Stepper motors are super easy to control because you can have super accurate position control with minimal effort. It's like control systems on easy mode. Really, they're so awesome. Why didn't you use them for your robot? Did I send for you? I did it because I can. And the fact that a stepper motor doesn't fit into my design requirements. Okay, yeah, that second reason was like 90% of the reason why I did it, but who's keeping score? <laughs> You see, when I was designing this, I wanted it to be as fast, compact, and relatively silent as possible. Hence the choice of the servo motor. Oh, you don't know what a servo is either? Ah, jeez. Can I explain everything to you, don't I? Well, no worries, my friend. I'll break it down for you. Servo motors are plain old DC motors which spin when you apply a voltage. Easy, right? In theory, yes. But these buggers have a dark secret. They're watching you. This little bump on its rear is called an encoder. Translating from nerd talk, it's a sensor that detects any time that the shaft rotates. When it detects motion on the shaft, it sends a pulse of electricity basically saying, Hey, look at me! I moved! And by counting how many times the encoder lets us know it moves per full revolution, we can accurately determine the position of the shaft. And by extension, the position of our carriage, yay! And the acronym used to designate how accurate an encoder is, is PP, R, or pulses per revolution. The higher the pulses per revolution, the more accurate the encoder. So an encoder with eight pulses per revolution, for example, 
would generate eight unique pulses for each full rotation of the shaft. But wait, there's more. Oh my goodness, I'm old. You notice that there's a set of gears connected to the front of this motor. And what this does is it slows down the output shaft in exchange for torque. So if a gear has a 10 to one ratio, for example, it spins 10 times on the input for each full rotation on the output. So if our encoder is eight pulses per revolution on the input with a gear ratio of 10 to one, then our encoder is effectively 80 pulses per revolution of the shaft. So we got our motor, we're controlling it with an Arduino and a motor driver. Someone else can explain that. And now it's gotta be tuned. This part is the one that really sucks because manually tuning a motor can be a huge, huge pain in the behind, man. I'll show you why. Watch what happens when I tell the motor to go to a position without doing any kind of tuning. Doesn't work very well, does it? Yeah, nope. You can see that it oscillates and overshoots the target before going in reverse. And then the cycle continues. In this state, the motor is operating in what is called closed loop control. And essentially what that means is that we have real-time feedback from the motor about its position as it moves. So theoretically, we can get it to arrive at our target, but our current control method basically sucks. And we enter the wonderful world of closed loop control. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty, but you can see it accelerates, it decelerates, and it arrives Mwah! on the dot or close enough for me. And it's a pain, but when you get it down pat, boy, is it worth it. Everything comes together. Are there easier ways to do this? Definitely. But at this point, it's more than just about the ice cream. I built this robot as a low cost intro to the world of robotics and automation. It spans everything from mechanical assembly, electrical engineering, all that good stuff. All that is well and good, but at the end of the day, it's just plain cool and that's good enough for me. If you like this video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the flip side.